Hello and welcome back to our last session of UN News. I am James May. And I'm Jeremy Clarkson, filling in for Richard Hammett tonight, who unfortunately could not make it, as he was killed by Angolan terrorists during our last newscast. We would first off like to celebrate the end of the Cold War. It has been a rough 45 years and we are glad to see its end. Indeed it has been. And for those of you who have been hiding in a steel bunker fearing a nuclear attack uh, for these last 45 years, we have provided uh, a little special uh, segment on the Cold War and its ending that has just happened. We also have a series of clips showing figures from the Cold War to further inform you of this history. And as many of you know, uh, it was a large contact that was not only affected the U.S. and the Soviet Union, it also affected many of the other countries around the world, including those in Latin America and Indochina. In Latin America being our central topic of discussion, we are showing you clips of Fidel Castro in a never-before-seen interview. Fidel, me puede una palabra? Si, but I'll make it quick. My mistress and I want to go swimming. Okay, so why did you lead an armed revolution against the Bautista regime? You know how repressive the Batista regime was. They suppressed dissent and they took away the rights of the people, much more so than his predecessor, President Machado. The gap between the rich and the poor was growing. It was only a matter of time before the people became discontent. Okay, but was your revolution based on communistic principles or was it simply the overthrowing of a dictatorial regime? Communism, oh communism, everyone talks about it to me about all communism, oh, and I know what the world thinks. I know that everyone thinks that we are communist, but I am not a communist. Un momento. Oh, gracias, mi Where was I? Oh, the United States had felt their need to impose an embargo upon us, and I had to go somewhere for help. If the Soviet Union were the only people who would give me help, then so be it. Okay, so what has been the Cuban response in Cuba to the CIA's failed overthrow of your regime? <laughs> Walk with me. I almost feel bad for the United States. They've tried so many times to overthrow me. Their failed Bay of Pigs invasion. Their laughable attempts to assassinate me. But I've seen them coming every time. I've watched them in Iran and in Guatemala. And they failed. I see them coming each time. There's nothing they can do to stop me. Wait, what are you saying? Do you plan to attack Los Estados Unidos in the future? There's nothing I can tell you, stupid Americano. There's nothing they can do to me now. And one day they will see the power that I really hold. Stupid Americano! Our regards go out to the family of Michael Hunt, the uh, reporter killed in that video you just saw. Such a shame that such a handsome man had to go like that. Oh, we have an introduced star, uh, Bruce Jenner, a Cuban revolution analyst, who will be enlightening us on Fidel Castro and his rule in the Cuban revolution. Well, thank you, James. Right, so to summarize, Fidel Castro led an armed revolution against the Bautista regime that overthrew Fulencio Bautista after about three years of armed violence. Fulencio Bautista was a U.S.-backed dictator who widened the gap between the rich and the poor, took away many of the rights of the Cubans, and killed thousands of them with their secret police. Fidel launched a successful revolution that was very popular among the people, and he was greeted with cheers when he rode into Havana in 1959. However, once in power, Fidel led a very oppressive regime as well. Though he consistently denied being a communist, he had close ties with the USSR and got much military and economic aid from them. In response, the U.S. tightened their embargo against Cuba and attempted to remove Castro from power and tried to assassinate him on many attempts. In his years of power, 
Fidel went to extreme measures to weed out all counter-revolutionary activities. By the end of 1960, all opposition newspapers had been closed down, and radio and TV were now under the control of Cuba. Additionally, he is accused of imprisoning and torturing about 20,000 dissidents. Although the U.S. kept its embargo, Castro's combination of repression and shrewd political strategy kept him in power until 20 years after the end of the Cold War. Castro was the longest reigning non-royal head of state ever. He ruled from 1989 until poor health forced him to step down in 2008 at the age of 82. Well, thank you, Bruce, on uh, giving us some information on uh, Fidel. You're welcome. You can go now. A special thanks to Bruce Jenner, who enlightened us on Fidel Castro and what he really means to the Cuban Revolution. Oh, well. Hello. Hello. Well, uh, we uh, have another exciting segment coming up, actually, uh, in a different part of Latin America, with the uh, 1951 elections in Brazil. And we now go to our reporter in the field. Thanks, Jeremy. I am here at a voting booth in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, where Brazil is holding its second presidential elections since President Getulio Vargas stepped down as dictator in 1945. The 1945 elections brought Gaspar Dutra to power as Vargas resigned. However, in the years since, Dutra's policy of cooperation with the U.S. and protecting foreign industry has hurt Brazilian workers. As a result, President Vargas has come out of retirement to challenge President Dutra, and all signs point to him winning this election. Hello, voter. Now tell me, what do you think about this election? I'm voting for Vargas. Even though he was a dictator, he cared about the common people and promoted nationalism. Dutra has just sold us out to foreign investors at the expense of the poor, like myself. We want a Brazil for Brazilians. I know that Vargas will win. Vargas in 1951. Oh, thank you, voter. Okay, so there you have it. Anti-Dutra sentiment is running high, and clearly Vargas nationalism program has become popular once again. It looks like Vargas will be president again, and as for what it is to come, who can say? Back to you, Jeremy. Thank you. As you can see, Vargas's popularity was, was running very high in the 1951 election, and he did indeed win by a landslide. Uh, however, uh, the power-hungry military uh, over which he presided uh, really wanted to oust him and, in fact, uh, initiated a military coup during his years in power during 1954. Uh, he actually committed suicide uh, during their attempt to seize power. And his suicide actually rallied his supporters around him and uh, took away all opportunity that the military would have to gain power. We now welcome our Brazilian affairs expert, Dick Chowder, to share some enlightenment on President Vargas. Thank you for having me here. Now, although President Getulio Vargas was an autocratic ruler, he was exceedingly popular amongst the people of Brazil, particularly among the working classes because he promoted domestic industry and employment. Although he favored economic centralization and social welfare, he was a staunch anti-communist. Unlike many South American leaders who saw foreign investment as the way to achieve economic prosperity, Vargas tried to strengthen the domestic economy and uplift the worker. As a result, the Brazil, prosper the Brazil became prosperous as the Second World War concluded. However, the war also brought calls for democracy as the people questioned how an autocratic government could be fighting the Axis supposedly to promote freedom. As a result, Vargas resigned as dictator in 1945 and President Gaspar Dutra came to power. Dutra, however, reversed the nationalist policies of Vargas and wasted a great deal of money promoting and protecting foreign holdings in Brazil. As a result, the people longed for Vargas, brand of nationalist economies, and Vargas came out of retirement to win the 1951 election you see here. The power-hungry military, however, came to challenge his rule, leading to unrest and his suicide in 1954. The death of the beloved Vargas, however, crushed the support that his adversaries had, and democracy prevailed in Brazil. <clears throat> well, thank you, Dick Chowder. <clears throat> we will now uh, cut to a sequence of uh, Juan Perón from Argentina to see how he has been ruling Argentina. 
Juan Perón was an Argentine military officer who had a hand in the overthrow of several governments. He curried the favor of the working class in Argentina. He became romantically involved with a popular radio star, Eva Duarte. When arrested in 1945, Duarte came to his aid calling for his followers to force his release. Half a million workers occupied Buenos Aires, demanding his freedom. Perón married Eva a few days later. In 1946, Perón easily won election as president. He remained in power for nine years. He nationalized businesses and gave women the right to vote, and instituted many public works programs. But opposition was not tolerated. Eva, his wife, became a national saint. Some believe she was the power behind his presidency. Thank you for watching our last session of UN News. It's been nice to recount all of our memories from past sessions on the oh, Cold War. Hold on, not so fast, not so fast. What, what? I'm getting a transmission in that apparently, apparently intercontinental ballistic missiles have been launched. And they're heading here. To this location, what? Yeah. Seriously? No! Oh my gosh! Oh, hold me! Oh, hold me, Jason! Oh, oh, we got it! It's okay! Oh my gosh! Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, run! This way! Oh, All right! Oh, oh, this way! Should have had. We need to spend.